welcome to Special Stage where we're here for the Welsh Hill Rally and as you can see the weather is not great. Chris Bird is just behind me getting ready now on the start line to defend his win from last year and to make things a little bit different there are quads and most bikes here as well. Let's head over to the stages for all of the action. Last year's Ali Sport Welsh Hill Rally organised by Tomley Motorsport and Newton District Motor Club took place later in the year at Walters Arena. But this year the organisers had moved the date and the venue, so it would be a whole new challenge, including the event being joined by the All-Terrain Rally Challenge for off-road bikes and quads. The crews would have seven stages to complete over two days, each well over 20 kilometres, a total of almost 200 kilometres by the end of day two. A great lineup of cars and bikes were here this weekend, including last year's Hill Valley winner and all-wheel drive safari champion, Chris Bird. He leads the way this weekend but has plenty of competition ready, so make sure he doesn't have it easy. So the first two stages for the cruise, just over 50 kilometres, and the weather wasn't being kind. Taking the early lead would indeed be Chris Bird and Amanda Garrett Lee, the first car into the stage and there was always a little pressure to make sure they picked out the correct braking points with nobody else's lines to follow. They end this morning with a small lead of 10 seconds. So you were leading after stage one, how's it been out there for you this morning? It's been entertaining, there's lots of, lots of rain, lots of snow on the top of the mountains, it's been slippery and slick and it's been a challenge but it's, it's, it's a pleasant, lovely, lovely course but it's, the weather has been against us. Dan Lofthouse and Tony Coy didn't have much luck on the event last year and we're back once again. Dan not out racing much this season so it's going to be straight into racing with no seat time for the pair with second place now despite a stall in one of this morning's stages. How are those first two stages for you? Uh, they've been really well. Uh, we've had a um, bit of a mishap on the first stage, so we had a, a reverse and a stall, so we dropped a bit of time, I think, to Chris. Second stage, we had a pretty clean run through, um, no problems. It's a bit strange, the weather's, you know, from snow to rain to to sleep, it's quite slick in places, uh, quite difficult to read the land, but it's such a fantastic place to be, you know, I can't argue about anything really, just having a whale of a time. Dan and Kim Evans would be another crew to watch, always going well at these events and more than capable of challenging for that win. It would be a slightly slower start for the pair than those ahead, but they get to the end of the first two tricky stages with third place for now. Very wet on the first stage, um, second stage there's quite a lot of fog and then snow on the top as well. But okay, yeah good. Everything running okay with the car? So far seems fine, yep. Yeah, we took the first stage a little bit too steady so they've, we've dropped a minute on Chris and Dan so we'll try and push on a bit now and try and get some back. Richard Kershaw was back out after not competing for a few years with Matthew Harrison alongside. Not expected to be as fast as what he was used to he surprises with a fourth place finish to this morning's stages. How have you found it out there this morning? Oh, fun, lots of fun. I haven't done it for a couple of years and uh, really enjoying it today. And this is something different to what we're used to seeing you driving, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh... Well, it feels like a go-kart to drive. It's really quite funny because it's, they're just so easy and so, so much fun. To, you get away with so much that you won't get away with in a bigger car. You're not going as fast, I know, but they are. They're just a scream, absolute scream. No problems at all for Andrew West and Peter Woodup this morning as they have a good run to end stage two in fifth. The pair also leading the way in class E at this stage. How is your morning gone? Really well, thank you. Yeah, really enjoyed the two stages we've done already. Fantastic. Has the weather been an issue for you at all or do you enjoy it when it's like this? 
I can't say that I enjoy it, no, but it's not an issue. No, it's fine. No. And second in that class were Gordon Monaghan and Stephen Matthews. Monaghan would have been a regular on British cross-country events using some parts of these stages, but it was unlikely that it would have given much of an advantage, if anything, this weekend. They lie in sixth place for now. Alex Popotis and Nicholas Bolt would be the second of our buggies in the top 10 this weekend. Proving that what they lack in top speed, they must make up for in the rough and technical parts of the stage. The pair lie in seventh overall and second in the class behind Kershaw. As well as the Hill Rally Championship, this event would also be around the Defender Challenge from Bowler and it will be Ed Cobley and John Tomley that take the early lead in that part of the event. And of course, mixing it in the overall results as well in eighth. It's been a very tricky morning. How have you found it out there? Not been tricky for us. Uh, nice and wet, nice and slippy, great stages, great organisation. Uh, it was interesting earlier on when the snow fell mentally, um, but no, it's for us, we're testing a new tyre with the Defender Challenge with Bowler, the new Coopers, uh, and they're working fantastic, they're really hooking up for us. Um, first time in this car, it's brand spanking new, so uh, trying to preserve it, but doing very, very well. Uh, I think some of the guys are having a few problems out there, so uh, we're taking advantage of that and moving ourselves up amongst these exotic uh, prototype cars, so a really great event so far for us, thank you. Ashley Short and Steve Almond were having a good run over this morning's stages, leading the way in Class B and lying just inside the top 10 in ninth overall. How have you found those first two stages? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It took us a while to get into the first stage, maybe a mile a mile and a half just to get into the swing of things but once we did that yeah we're having a right, really good laugh did the snow phase you this morning at all not one minute the wetter the better for me <laughs> i've got nice doors and heaters <laughs> <laughs> i'm rounding out the top 10 with ian greg and colin brindley third in their class and making that three polaris buggies inside the top 10. In some of the classes outside the top 10, it would be 11th overall for Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay, second of the Defender Challenge crews this weekend, but with a two minute deficit to Cobley up ahead in the class. Things were not going so well for David Stephen and Johnny Kunja. After blowing the engine on an event the week before, it was a rush to get a new engine sourced and fitted in time. Fortunately, they did, but unfortunately there were problems. The engine still wasn't running right in the early stages and would need some investigation in the service. How have you found it out there this morning? Uh, it's a bit wet, it's a bit cold. Uh, it, it's been quite a dramatic week. Um, we were at a, a club event last weekend, uh, blew the engine you know, on the Sunday morning. Uh, been up to Scotland, picked a new engine up, brought it back, fitted it you know, this week, drove it over and we've still got a bit of an issue. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll continue you know, this, this afternoon and hopefully we're looking you know, to clean the injectors out and potentially it could be an injector issue. So it, it's, you know, it's a great place you know, to race, but it's just unfortunate you know, that, that uh, you know, the, the car just needs a little bit of fettling work. So. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, so we'll just keep at it. So we're running on five of the six. Some of the steep inclines are difficult, uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we're still going. So fingers crossed, so let's see what happens. Christian Fermont and Leon Van Hesbrook would be another pair of the Defender Challenge crews here this weekend. The pair lying in third in that class for now, as well as in 14th in the overall event results. Chris and Stuart Bowler would have an easy time in Class C, being the only ones in that class, but overall it would be a different story. Lying in 17th overall and not having the top speed on some of the longer parts of the stage.
just a couple of crews in Class D, and it would be Andrew Jones and Lisa Saxton that lead the way in that class, down in 24th overall. And rounding out the results in 29th overall with the all-female crew of Sean Rogers and Gemma Louise Barker, leading the way in Class A. And for Mark Jacks and Simon Last, it would be second in Class D, down in 30th overall. Not helped by a maximum stage time on Stage 1, dropping them down the results from what could have been potentially a top 10 time. With the midway point on day one of the Ali Sports Welsh Hill Rally, the results look like this. Chris Bird has that early lead but only just, with Dan Loftus keeping him firmly in his sights. Joining the cars this weekend would be the all-terrain rally challenge for the bikes and they were providing plenty of entertainment out on the stages. Leading the way in the bikes would be Gordon Clark. The times over this morning's first two stages were actually faster overall than our leading car. Just over a minute faster overall in fact. Snow on the higher ground must have been daunting for the bikes but thankfully for most part it was just rain. Not that rain would be any better on a bike and taking up second place at this stage would be Aaron Wells, two minutes behind the leader. Things were a little closer in third though with just five seconds separating Wells in second from this man, Owen Whittock in third. Mike Wells ends this morning's first two stages in fourth, a two minute deficit in that place but with plenty more stages to go. It would be close over the next few stages though, as Paul Robson ends these two in fifth place, just 16 seconds behind Wells. Things are a little closer again for Lee Green, just 12 seconds behind Robson after stage two. Sadly, the number one rider this weekend was not at the top where he would have hoped to be. He would have a small advantage though in that place, with just over a minute back to 7th place Adrian Middleton, trailing Green ahead but he didn't have much room for error behind him. He was being chased down by Dave Leach, just 8 seconds would be the difference at this stage and one of many fights to be on for the next few stages. And it would be only 9 seconds further back for Matt Fordham getting in on that close battle ahead and will be looking at gaining a few places in the afternoon stages. And rounding out the top 10 will be Lee Salt, himself just another 9 seconds back in that place, making it a close four-way fight in the bottom half of the top 10 this morning. So before we head back to the cars, here's a look at how the results stand in the bikes. Onto the afternoon on day one and a repeat of this morning's two stages. Big change now at the top of the leaderboard as Chris Bird and Amanda Garrelly unfortunately go off the road on a slow corner and get the car stuck. Unable to get it out themselves, they lose a lot of time and drop right down the results and lose any chance of victory. Um, it was just a silly error and it came round the corner and he just hooked the wheel over a bank and fell down the bank in. But he wouldn't re the car wouldn't start. So we were stuck, stuck down, but we were in a dangerous spot. So, they, so we, got a, we got a pull out and then it wouldn't restart then. So we lost four, four and a half minutes, I think. Have you done any damage, do you think? I wouldn't have thought so. It was five miles an hour. It went just, it fell over the bank in and it was just stuck on its nose. But it cut out and wouldn't restart. And that was it, end of. Of course, this means that for Dan Loftus and Tony Coyd, it would now be the lead. 
The pair were very close going into this afternoon stages, having closed the gap to just one second between themselves and Bird. But with the problems ahead, it would now mean a good five minute advantage for the pair out ahead of the rest of the field. So going into the last couple of stages of the day, or the last stage of the day, there was just one second between you and Chris. And you're back here and Chris isn't here. Yeah, we, um, I think we both went out on a bit of a mission on that last one. Um, I know I were taking some chances, um, quite big chances actually, not like me. Um, and unfortunately Chris has also been taking some, but he's just gone a bit wide on the corner and the car's bellied out on the bank. Unfortunately, we just went past him and they're both OK, so uh, it looks like I'm in the lead at the moment. So um, I hope he gets it out and gets back and we're going to have a bit of a battle tomorrow. But Unfortunately, Bird wouldn't be the only one suffering. As Dan and Kim Evans go into this loop of stages with a good feeling in the car, but unfortunately their day and indeed their event would come to an end, resting against a tree down a drop off the stage. Despite thinking that it was a bit of fun and wasn't the fastest, Richard Kershaw and Matthew Harrison were certainly going well. Up to second overall now and of course leading the class. They may not have been on the pace of Lofthouse ahead, but with Bird now out of the picture, nobody worse. So second place for now and a great end to day one for the pair. And indeed a good finish to the day for Andrew West and Peter Widop. They lead the way in class E and move up the results after the loss of Bird and Evans to take up the final podium place at this stage. The lead may look like it was out of reach, but they were only 30 seconds behind Kershaw going into day two. You've made it to the end of day one. How has it been for you? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I've loved, I've loved it all day. It's been fantastic. And obviously here the conditions are horrible, but what are they like out there? Uh, on the gravel tracks, they're, they're fine, absolutely fine. There's loads of grip, yeah, so just having a good time playing. No problems for Gordon Monaghan and Stephen Matthews in the stages. They end the day with fourth place, still lying second in the class behind West. But closing the gap now down to just six seconds at the end of day one. And with three more stages still to try and change that on day two. So that's the end of day one. How have you enjoyed it? It's, it? I've enjoyed it, but it's been a long day and some long stages. But I'm glad I'm here at the end. Yeah, Saturday night. <laughs> Ed Cobley and John Tomley have no problems maintaining the lead in the Defender Challenge, leading the way in their class and lying in fifth overall on the results. Some great pace from the pair this weekend, so far showing that the Defender could achieve a top ten result in the right hands. So did you have as much fun this afternoon as what you had this morning? <laughs> no, lost our power steering unfortunately on uh, halfway through stage three, um, came back into the pits and uh, the pump had cracked or something had gone wrong with the uh, power steering pump. So we head out to the uh, stage four, last stage with no power steering and uh, somebody was shining on us because we set off the start line and decided to come back again. It was very intermittent but hugely slippy that last time, very foggy but no, just as good as the morning. Ashley Short and Steve Almond stay out of trouble and manage to get the big discovery back to Sweetland at the end of day one in one piece. And in sixth overall. The pair, of course, the only ones running in Class B, so that was safe. But their battle would be with Cobley, who was only a single second ahead of them going into day two.
A good tidy run for Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay ensures they get to the end of the day with second in the Defender Challenge. A little behind the pace of Copley ahead, but still well inside the top ten in seventh overall too. How were those last few stages for you? Uh, really, really good. No, I really enjoyed them. They were very, very fast and good. Now I'm getting more used to it, so very good, yeah. Are you looking forward to tomorrow? Yes, yes, looking forward to it because we've got used to things a bit better and hopefully tomorrow we can go a bit faster. Ben Gott and Courtney Kenobi had a bit of a disastrous morning. The wipers on the car locking together and meaning they drove half the stage without them. And that didn't get any better. Spending the afternoon trying to see where they were going, but determination sees them climb into eighth overall now. And with a few hours overnight to try and fix that visibility issue. Now this is why I think some people prefer cars with windows. Yeah, and windscreen wipers. <laughs> so was after last stage with no vision. Oh. So yeah, that was interesting. Apart from the no vision, how has the day been for you? It's just been on and off. Well, yeah, on and off. Good stage, bad stage, good stage, bad stage. So, uh, yeah, we're still in it. David Stephen and Johnny Kunja were still having problems too. The car running on five of its six cylinders, which was losing them time. But thankfully, it wasn't getting any worse. The shorter service during the day hadn't given them any time to fix the problem, but hopefully they would find a solution before day two. Now, you had a few problems this morning. You're only running on five cylinders. How was this afternoon for you? Uh, we're still running on five. We're generally dropping a lot of time every single stage. Uh, we're still running, we're going to have a go at you to tonight. Uh, see if we can take the injectors out, give them a clean out, see if that's what the issue is. Um, but other than that, you know, there's not a hell of a lot we can do, but you know, we're here, we're still running. And it would be a move up to round out the top ten for Christian Fremont and Leon Van Hesbrook at the end of day one. Remaining third in the Defender Challenge still at this stage. Chris and Stuart Bowler make a move the right way up the results to end the day in 14th overall and of course being the only ones in Class C that was safe too. So at the end of day one of the Ali Sport Welsh Hill Rally, the results look like this. All change at the top for Dan Lofthouse, who just has to keep it steady and stay out of trouble to take the win this weekend. So that brings us to the end of day one of the Welsh Hill Rally and after going into the final stage with just one second between them, a little incident for Chris Byrne means that Dan Lofthouse takes the lead. Join us after the break for all of the action from day two. Day two and three more stages for the crews and the weather would still be less than ideal. There wouldn't be any change in the lead of the event as we still see Dan Lofthouse and Tony Coyd leading the results, with Chris Bird still running on day two. Unaware of how far down the order he was, it means that the pair were pushing each other over this morning's stages. Lofthouse wasn't able to back off any, despite a good lead. Feeling that driving at 90% could lead to more mistakes than maintaining the flat out pace right to the finish. But with a gearbox gremlin at the end of these stages, it might not be plain sailing to the finish.
Dan, it's the final stage to go. Are you going to be taking it easy or do you feel like you might have to push on a bit? Uh, I'll just try and keep a good pace. You take it too easy, you make mistakes. Uh, we went on that last run and tried to to, to, to you know match Chris and, and keep him a bit quieter, but um, unfortunately we had a gearbox issue at the end which dropped us probably 10 or 15 seconds. So we lost the stage by three seconds, but it's, I'm happy with that. Uh, we just need to do a good run now. Uh, we've lost gearbox, electronic aid, so I'm back to manual, uh, old school way of changing gear. So um, we'll probably lose a bit of time with that, but all fingers crossed we should be all right. Think Change in second place now too, as we see Gordon Monaghan and Stephen Matthews jump up to take that place. He keeps up the pace on day two and sets some good times. Unable to catch the leaders, but with their problems, it would be the best place to be sitting. Just one more stage to go. Are you going to be pushing on or taking it steady? I'm going to take it steady on this last run. It's still a lot of mileage. Um, but I'm glad to be this far into it, yeah. Are you happy with everything, the way the car's gone this weekend? The car's been very good, yes. Yeah, yeah, it has, it's been really good. So. Richard Kershaw and Matthew Harrison drop a little time, but the pair remain in the podium places now in third. Richard describing the car yesterday as a lot of fun, and that certainly looked to be the case on the stages. Fog on the higher ground was causing some issues, but nothing to worry about at this stage. Just this one last stage to go. How do you think you're going to go? Uh, just get to the end. It's very foggy, really quite difficult stage. So just go around and finish and enjoy it, hopefully. Great. Unfortunately for Andrew West and Peter Widop, the push from Monaghan ahead sees them now having to settle for second in the class and fourth overall. It was still a great place to be and showing some good pace. The pair lying 24 seconds behind Kershaw which was possible to take in the final stage if they have a good push. Just one more stage to go. Will you be giving it everything or a little bit cautious? No, oh, just going cautious now. I can't catch the man in front and I've got a bit of a gap behind, so just finish now. Ed Cobley and John Tomley were still enjoying a trouble-free run. To remain in fifth place, putting in some good times on the morning stages to keep hold of that good lead in the Defender Challenge 2. The gap to fourth ahead was too big to change in the final stage, so a clean and steady run at this pace to the finish would be needed. I know you almost had a few problems yesterday afternoon. How has it been for you this morning? Fantastic. No, really good. Um, had a really good stage one. Took it a little bit easy uh, on uh, this morning's stage. Felt comfortable, so uh, pushed a little bit harder on the second stage. Took 40 seconds out of the guys behind us, which is really good. Took five seconds out of the little Polaris, which is fantastic. So uh, Team Sturge is doing well. Uh, got to concentrate on the Defender Challenge, which at the moment we've got uh, just about a two-minute gap, um, which is fantastic. So uh, looking forward to the end stage, even though the fog is up there. Cobbley couldn't take it too steady, though. His Defender Challenge was safe, but his overall place wasn't with the discovery of Ashley Shaw and Steve Almond close behind in sixth overall. Just 15 seconds separating them with the final stage remaining, so the result could still go either way. The end is in sight now. How are you looking forward to this last stage? Uh, there's a few bit of nerves. Uh, the car in front just take a little bit more time out of me, so it's one of those: do I go push? Do I go push for it, or do I sit back and accept defeat? What do you think you're going to do? Uh, this moment in time, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I don't know. I think I'll probably push for, it. Push for it. Yeah. Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay remain inside the top ten and in seventh overall. The position unlikely to change in the final stage. They remain seventh overall and second in the Defender Challenge. Just one more stage to go. How are you feeling? Quite good to get this far. Um, just have to now try and make sure we get the last stage done and finish the event. Does the fog worry you at all? Uh, a wee bit, but we just have to slow down and drive you know, to the conditions, you know, we can't go too fast, so we have to make sure we just drive to the conditions. 
Ben Gott and Courtney Kenobi were still struggling with their problems from day one, but they managed to remain in eighth place overall. Luckily the weather was clearing slightly and they were able to get through parts of the stage without problems. Their position seemed safe from either direction as long as they finished. So you solved your window wiper problem from <laughs> yesterday then? This is the final desperation for the last run. Yeah, the guys just uh, tried really hard to fix it, but no, so I ripped out in 30 seconds and off we go. So you're doing this stage with no windscreen? Yep. How do you think that's going to go? Wet, dirty, cold, but fun, I'm sure. And a bit of relief for David Stephen and Johnny Kunja as they managed to get the car working as it should for this morning's stages. The car much easier to drive now it was up to its full power, but sadly a little late in the event to make a difference on the results. Ninth overall and third in Class E for the pair with one stage to go. <laughs> now your car sounds a lot less poorly than it did yesterday. Uh, it probably has six cylinders rather than three that I had yesterday, so it's uh, going to have a lot better. Um, it's night and day. You'll say you, today it actually goes. Yesterday we were just taking part. We were just being a part of the numbers. So we're back. you so we're back out. You're today. It's a little bit more fun than it was yesterday. Did you have a lot of work to do last night in the end? No, we actually got it done well within the. It probably took about an hour. So we done it within a two-hour service. Everything went well. You know, so we, we simply wouldn't have been able to do it any earlier than 40 minute stops. So, you know, we're here, we're running, we've got one more stage to go, so let's just you know, say, hope you know, that, that we finish off, you know, and that's it, done. And there will be no change to that final podium place in the Defender Challenge at this stage, with Christian Fremont and Leon Van Hesbrook still holding on to that. However, they ended day one with only a four second advantage in that place, and they go into the final stage of the day with only 10 seconds in their favour ahead of charging David Harlow and Sarah Smith, who will be looking to steal that podium place from them in that final stage. Chris and Stuart Bowler keep climbing up the results a little more, now up to 13th place and of course the only ones in Class C. They didn't look like they can make any advance on the results now, just sit back and keep the pace through the final stage. Alex Parpotas and Nicholas Bolt claw back a little time on the overall results on this morning's stages to light in 14th overall. But there, of course, still wouldn't be any change to the class position, with second in the class still theirs. And it would be third in that class for Simon Crow and Antonia Cook. The place they gained at the end of day one was still theirs, and hopefully that wouldn't change over the final stage of the event. Mark Jacks and Simon Last managed to get themselves up the results enough to take the Class D lead, which was at least a little something after a bad start to the weekend. And unfortunately problems on the first stage of the day mean that it's a slip down the results for Andrew Jones and Lisa Saxton, who sit in second place in the class now at this stage. Sean Rogers and Gemma Louise Barker still round out the results in 27th overall and first in Class A. With just one stage remaining at the Ice Falls Welsh Hill Rally, it's a good lead for Dan Lofthouse with just a few close battles going on behind for those class and overall places. So Dan Lofthouse manages to keep hold of the lead going into the final stage. Stay with us for the final results. <laughs> On to the final stage then and a look at the results for the bikes. Richard Morgan makes some good progress over the later stages of the event and steps up to round out the top 10. 
There wouldn't be any change over the second half of the event for Matt Forden. He remains in the ninth place that he held earlier on day one. Cliff Fisher has a good push to move up to eighth. Sadly, the bikes would lose out on the final stages due to the fog, but after a tricky weekend, nobody would complain about an early finish. Mike Wells unfortunately drops a few places over these stages to end the event in seventh overall after lying up in fourth at the midpoint of day one. And for Dave Leach, it would be a move the other way, moving up from eighth into sixth overall, and that's where he would finish the event. Aaron Wells slips a little, having been in second place at the start of day one. It would be a drop down a few places to take fifth at the end of the event. Paul Robson has a steady run to remain in a similar position all weekend, finishing the event with fourth place on the Honda. And Lee Green manages to find some extra pace in the remaining stages to move up and take that final step on the podium. Glad to see the back of the freezing day one temperatures and get the feeling back in his hands. And for Owen Whittock, it would be a place game too. Ending the event with second overall and with a comfortable advantage in that place. But it would be a win this weekend for Gordon Clark. Having held the lead from day one, the KTM serving him well this weekend. And he takes the win by just over three minutes. So before we chat to the winner, here's a final look at the standings in the bikes. Congratulations, you've won this weekend's event. How has it been for you? Uh, it's been pretty wet and cold. Uh, we've had a hard time with the weather here. Just the rain today, we'd snow yesterday morning and that's sticking to the goggles. Like goggles don't come with wiper blades, but we could have done with them like. But uh, it's, it's been good, it's been tough. Uh, the stages have held up pretty well. Wasn't sure what the mix of the cars and the bikes, whether what way they cut up. And in some ways the cars helped it for us for our second run through the stages. And uh, other places it might have rotted it a bit, but it was, it was good. It's been very, very fast really fast but um, I just love the way they, they prepare the roads here in the Welsh Forest. You can hook the front wheel inside the corners and just flick it left to right and it's oh, amazing, amazing stuff. Because the guys here, they, the cars quite like the wet. Yeah. What are the ideal conditions for you? Is it wet or do you prefer it dry? No, actually wet like this is better because it gives the ground a bit of bite and the tyres dig in better. Uh, we arrived here Friday afternoon and it was lovely blue skies and everything but the ground goes like we call it blue groove really slick and slippy um, and on a bike that's harder with a car you have four tires and they, they get a like, little bit more room for grip but for us if the front goes it could go two inches it could go two foot uh, well in these conditions here actually they're better for us we can dig it in and, and do it you just end up looking like this though it's the only problem <laughs> on to the final results in the Ali Sport Welsh Hill Rally then and it would be 26th overall for Sean Rogers and Gemma Louise Barker the pair making it to the end of a tricky event without any drama Andrew Jones and Lisa Saxton don't have the end to their event that they would have wanted. They finish in 25th overall, but unfortunately miss out on the Class D win, having to settle for second. Disappointment and bad luck for Ben Gott and Courtney Kenobi too. They go out without the window screen for the final run in the last ditch attempt to finish. Sadly for them, they would get a maximum and drop down the overall results to 24th and second in Class F. Mark Jacques and Simon Lars continue to put in some good times to the finish. Sadly too late to do anything good overall, they end the event in 23rd overall and take the Class D win. James King and Sally Lewis's event looked over before it started, when they make a navigation error on the first stage and take a maximum. But the times for the rest of the event were good and they managed to get themselves 22nd overall and the Class F win. Ian Gregg and Colin Brinley managed to remain not too far off the pace on the final stages and would take third in the T1 class at the end of the event.
Simon Crow and Antonia Cook manage to gain the advantage over Greg in the earlier stages and they keep hold of that to the finish and take second in the class and 16th overall. And for Alex Parpotas and Nicholas Bolt, it would be a move to 13th overall by the end of the final stage. Not the top 10 result they look set to take earlier in the event, but a class win for the pair was a good end to the weekend. Chris and Stuart Bowler have a good, trouble-free run to end the event in 12th overall and of course take the Class C win, a good weekend for the pair here in Wales. Christian Fermont and Leon Van Hesbrook would manage to hold on to their third in class in the Defender Challenge. They extend the advantage in that place to 14 seconds. A very close finish to over two and a half hours of rallying this weekend. The final stages see Martin James and Greg Clement move into the top ten. A few problems over the weekend with braking drive shafts wasn't enough to stop them. They make it to the end in ninth place overall and take third in the class. David Stever and Johnny Kunja enjoy a better run with the car performing as it should do and end the day with 8th overall and 2nd in Class E. The result could have been better if things had been working as they should, but a finish was a result in itself. No change all weekend for Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay, as they get to the end of the event with 2nd in the Defender Challenge. A good result holding off the competition in that class all weekend. Sadly though, they wouldn't be able to keep up with the pace set by Ed Cobley and John Tomley. The event long Defender Challenge winners take the class win this weekend, as well as sixth overall. A good weekend for the crew and the new car. With Cobley finishing the event in sixth, it meant that a push on the final stage was enough to move Ashley Short and Steve Almond up that extra place overall. And end the event in fifth. A great finish for the pair and although the only ones in their class, the overall result would certainly overshadow that. It's a good weekend for Andrew West and Peter Widop. No drama and the pair make it to the end of two days with fourth overall and take the Class E win. It was still close to the finish missing out on a podium place by just 20 seconds. But in those podium places, it would be the class win and third overall for Richard Kershaw and Matthew Harrison. Out this weekend for fun more than the result, but that attitude didn't seem to do them any harm. A great result after time out of the seat and in a new car. No change on the final stage for Gordon Monaghan and Stephen Matthews. He was never going to take the win on stage times over one final stage, but he was there should anything happen. Second place at the end of the event was a good result for the pair, but taking the win here this weekend were Dan Lofthouse and Tony Coyd. The pair led the event for the whole of day two after being within one second of Chris Bird at the end of the first day. It certainly would have been interesting to see how close the finish would have been if Bird hadn't made the mistake on day one. So before we chat to Dan, Here's a reminder of the final results here at the Alice Sport Welsh Hill Rally. Congratulations, obviously you took the lead yesterday and you've held on to it. Have you had a good weekend? Oh, I've had a fantastic weekend, we had a tough day today. Uh, a couple of little problems going into the last stage, um, but we held it together. You know, the st stages around here are phenomenal. Um, if you could say we could come back here every week, I would do. Uh, just got to say we've had a, a great weekend. There's a, a few people we've got to thank. There's John Hanley Motors, he's been uh, a big help. Uh, Lofthouse Motorsport, of course. Um, and PPG Gearboxes, they've been down this weekend giving us a hand. It's, you know, without them guys, you know, the car wouldn't be good. And obviously a massive thanks to Mike for lending me in the first place. 
And I did hear you just say that, is this the only event you're doing this season? Yeah, unfortunately I've got no car, so I'm on uh, borrow, steal and whatever I can um, until I get my, my own done again. Uh, just do this event, and then, but it's been a fantastic weekend. And, and uh, great course and you know it was a good battle with Chris it's a shame he, he did a bit and give me a bit of an easier ride today but it would have been interesting otherwise uh, whether we'd have got to finish pushing as hard as we were yesterday I don't know but we had a great uh, a great weekend. So that brings us to the end of the Welsh Hill Rally a very close fought battle between Chris and Dan yesterday but that small mistake from Chris Bird meaning that today was a relatively easy day for Dan to take the win. That's it from us from a very wet Wales. Join us next time.